sports. They bring us together. They tear us apart. They inspire us. And they turn the citizens of Philadelphia into apes with the dangerous knowledge on how to start a fire. Now, I feel like I have to preface this entire video by saying that I'm not that into sports. You probably were able to gauge that by my tiny wrists and lack of interest in balls. I mean, hockey's dope. I care about that sport and I'll wear a Woo Sox hat every now and again because I'm a hometown hero. But besides that, I don't care. And let's be honest, sports fans are entirely insane. It doesn't matter what sport you're into or what team you root for, every sport has its own crazy bullshit going on. So let's take a look at all the worst aspects of the sporting world so I can prove to you that watching this stuff turns your brain into mush. You can call me a pansy, I don't care. Sports are stupid. So I wanted to start this video off by calling out specific individuals and making fun of them because I feel like the amount of hate I'm gonna get for this video is insurmountable and in for a penny, in for a pound at this point. So let's talk about the worst types of sports fans. Now I understand that the majority of you go home after work, just wanna sit down with a beer and watch your favorite team play a game and that's fine. But the problem is my idea of a sports fan is ruined because these people all suck. They all, they all ruin it for everyone else. Up first, and the person I hate the most, the TV yeller. What are you doing? These guys are the worst. They're just sitting there yelling at a, an inanimate object alone. They're always yelling at the players or the coaches or the refs as if they're some kind of expert, as if the only reason they didn't go pro is because they forgot to put their name on the application. Shut up, you're a fat ass on a couch. Yelling audible advice like, shoot the puck at the TV as if they can hear you as if they can hear you. First of all, dipshit, they can't. Second of all, if they could, they'd tell you to shut the fuck up. There's only two types of people who should be yelling at a TV. One, children watching Dora, and two, those poor people in those Saw movies. Those poor people. Number two, we have the Midwestern college football fan. Now I'm gonna get crucified for saying that. These are just folks who went to college 30 years ago and can't uh, get away from that. God, people are gonna be pissed. And these guys wake up at like 3 a.m. to drive two hours to a parking lot so they can get hammered before the game starts at nine. It's super weird, they're like 40 years old. It just seems like something for someone to do who peaked in that same parking lot 20 years ago. Please don't kill me. We also have the Degenerate Gambler. Just wanna say God bless DraftKings and BetMGM and FanDuel. Thank you guys so much. You saw your opportunity and you ran with it. And now thousands, if not millions of sports fans around the world are hopelessly addicted to something that used to be an innocent pastime. Thank you guys so much. These guys are, I feel bad for them, but they really make the room tense whenever they watch sports with you. These guys are also TV yellers, but you kinda let them do it because they bet $500 on the over on a soccer game, which never bet the over on a soccer game. And when their team loses, it's not like a, ah, oh, it's like a we need to like leave the room because they're about to explode kind of sadness even when their team wins It's not as good as it should be like it's not a wave of euphoria It's more like just a relief that they don't have to sell their house now Then they always tell you about their 20 leg parlay that didn't hit I'm sick of it We have the elitist sports fan, which is the bane of my existence Oh, you like football name five out of the ten most recent recipients of the Heisman Trophy Oh, you like hockey name three second string goalies in the last 30 years Oh, you like baseball how many freckles are on big poppies Listen, just because you're addicted to fantasy sports does not make your obscure knowledge of all these players even remotely impressive. You memorizing all this shit is um, embarrassing, kind of, a little bit, wouldn't you say? If I could name and identify every background character in Adventure Time, I would think that you would think I to be a nerd, right? Well, I think you're a fucking nerd. And finally, we have soccer fans. Please relax. I don't know anything about soccer and I'm fully speaking out of turn here. I just read an article about how you, got, you threw a grenade on the field recently. Why would you do that? You guys are like killing each other. You're taking lives over what? Two nets, a ball, and some shin pads? I don't even want to keep talking about you guys anymore. It's terrifying. But you know what you shouldn't relax about and you should be yelling at your TV because of and you shouldn't gamble on? Your health. Seamless brand integration. Thank you to Factor for sponsoring today's video. Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen meals right to your doorstep. Factor helps you avoid takeout by giving you delicious and nutritious food that is ready quickly, which is good because I spend so much money on takeout. The meals make it easy to eat healthy, so you never have to opt into something that's not good for you, which is great because I eat like a raccoon, but I'm lazy. Factor meals arrive pre-prepared and ready in two minutes, perfect for a busy lifestyle or a lifestyle for somebody who is just lazy. I'm a very lazy person. It's also extremely flexible. So if you're having a bunch of buddies over to watch the big game, you can just order a bigger portion so that everyone can eat while they're screaming at the TV obnoxiously. So I already ate one of these when the box was first delivered because I was very hungry and I wanted to try it out. I, I, I got ahead of myself. But for the footage, I'm gonna make some jalapeno lime chicken and it's gonna be delicious. You're supposed to stick it with a fork so it doesn't overheat, but I already did that because I'm a professional. Just got a microwave for two minutes. Hot, hot. Ooh. 
the vibes are still good. It's actually crazy delicious, and I can't believe it's healthy, which is, uh, I guess, a selling point. I got a full meal in two minutes. What did you do today? Probably nothing. You should get Factor. I love Factor because it takes the guesswork out of clean eating, which is something I've talked about before. I just, I hate how many weird rules there are to eating healthy. So head to factor75.com or use the link below and use code BIGTUG50 to get 50% off your first order. That's 50, that's half, that's half the money. Factor, eat healthy and be lazy. That's not their slogan. Free slogan, once again, all for you, Factor. Now, at this point in the video, I would like to get a little bit more hyperbolic and make several more blanket statements because I feel like that's working for me so far. So I just wanted to talk smack about the people who play certain sports. Now, is this the nerdy high school version of me making fun of all the jocks because now I have a little bit of power? Absolutely yes. That being said, I don't think one sport is inherently better than any other sport, but the players of one sport can be way better than players of other sports. For example, baseball. You guys are obnoxious. I'll give it to you, you have patience because it's the most boring goddamn sport on earth. I don't know if it's the same now, but when I was in high school, if you were a baseball player, you were either like a really like sweet, chill kid or the biggest douchebag I've ever seen in my life. And they'd wear these twisty necklaces for some goddamn reason, like they accidentally fell into a box of cables. I don't know what the hell that was. And they'd always be chewing shit. And it was just, you know, you seem, they look like douchebags. Number two, hockey players. Assholes. All of you. I played hockey. I played hockey my whole life. Everyone I met in hockey was an asshole. I love them. Assholes. And if you walked up to a hockey player and said, you're a douchebag, they'd probably take it as a compliment. It's the lifestyle. And the same thing goes for lacrosse players. They're practically the same people. Just one is on a field and the other one's playing hockey. And lacrosse players are a little bit more douchey. There seems to be some kind of like daddy's money thing going on there. I also played lacrosse. So, you know, we have running as a sport. Uh, you guys need to shut the fuck up. I was so sick of seeing runners in high school with shirts that said, my sport is your sport's punishment. Yeah, that means it's not a sport, dumbass. I'm not gonna get into the debate of what's a sport and what's not, because I know like cheerleaders say that's a sport and then the guys are like, that's not a fucking sport, but it definitely is, but I don't wanna get into that. I just think it's weird that if you're competing all at the same time, but you have no chance of affecting each other, while you're competing, what's the fucking point of competing? Just do it alone and then show someone your time. Record it. I don't, it's stupid. I mean, you definitely are healthy. You're definitely getting the cardio in, but you know, shut up. Football players, I don't want to make fun of you because you have enough concussions that you might go on a murdering spree and I don't want to deal with that. Wrestlers, my father always said, don't mess with a wrestler, they'll twist you into a pretzel. So, you guys are chill. Am I missing any sports? Basketball? I don't know, basketball's chill. I don't really have any problem with basketball. Oh, soccer. Ugh. I definitely don't like soccer players, at least American soccer players, because they think they're on this wave. They think they're like European by playing soccer. And I know you're gonna think, no, we don't. Yes, you do. You do deep down, you think you're cooler for that. And also as an American, when a sport doesn't have any contact, like I can't hit you, that's, it's, you know, and they're all flopping and like pretending like they're hurt. That just makes me think you're a pussy. I'm sorry. If you could full on tackle someone in soccer, it would be a way better sport. Rocket League figured it out. Rocket League's like soccer, but you can blow each other up. That's exactly what we're looking for. So yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen the inside of a gym for like two years. So take everything I just said with a grain of salt and you can make fun of me in the comments. Finally, for my last segment, I wanted to talk about the weirdest sports from around the world. Uh, it doesn't really fit the exact theme of this video, but I was laughing my ass off while researching this, so I just I could not put it in here. Up first, we have ostrich racing. Look at these pictures. Not photoshopped. This is real. People just hop on the back of an ostrich and race to the finish line. I didn't know how big ostriches were. I really didn't comprehend that. Or heavy. Like, I, th I thought if you sat on an ostrich, you'd just fall through it because it's made of feathers and bones. Apparently, it's heavy. It can hold somebody. They're doing this in South Africa. I don't know what's going on down there. Seems like they're all losing their minds a little bit. There's a thing called chess boxing in the Netherlands, which is exactly what it sounds like. Hybrid sport that combines chess and boxing. You know, the physical element and the mental element. The winner is declared when there's either a checkmate on chess or someone gets knocked out while boxing, which is hilarious. I just love the idea of a nerd getting his shit rocked by a bully and then he says, well, I'm actually smarter than you. And the guy says, prove it, bitch. And then they invented this sport. So actually, I love this sport. We have Buzkashi, Afghanistan. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but Buzkashi uh, is also referred to as goat grabbing, which literal term, it's an equestrian sport, meaning you're riding a horse next to a goat that's also running, and then you jump off the horse and grab the goat as best you can, which is, that's not a sport. That's a jackass skit. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. No, it's a, you grab, oh, wait. Oh, my God. A, no, it's a goat carcass. 
carry it to the goal while fending off opponents. And there's all these diagrams. This is way more complicated than I originally thought. I'll give you, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. This seems like there's an actual thing going on here. Don't know why it's a carcass though. Don't know why there's a goat involved. We have wife carrying in Finland, which is just strong, handsome men carrying their petite wives uh, as fast as possible. So if you, if you're a woman and you're into that, go to Finland. There's extreme ironing where it's people. It's not really a sport. It's just people going to specific places that are dangerous and ironing some shit. It's more like the planking challenge from 2011. It's not. It's not legitimate. And then we have walk racing, which is in Germany. Participants race down a hill in a walk, which seems super fun. It's an individual sport, but there's also teams. Like four, they make a four-person walk bobsled of sorts. Honestly, I like all of these sports. I feel like we should be constantly trying new shit. I feel like new sports need to be developed. We've done baseball for too long. We've done football for too long. We've done football for too long. Thanks for watching. Uh, new videos every Friday. Also, new podcast episodes are coming out. You guys keep asking me for that. And I say that like I've been releasing podcast episodes, but I need to release the first podcast episode. Um, like, comment, and subscribe.